The Daytona 540. NASCAR Grand National Stock Cars with a pace car out of the way, edging down and breaking off the pole. David Pearson, car number 21. Richard Petty, number 43, alongside of him. In the second row, Bobby Isaac and Cale Yarborough. This is the way they started today. As they came rolling along easily and smoothly in unison, and the green flag flickered, and the race was on in this manner as Richard Petty jumped initially, but then charging from the second row came Cale Yarborough. Yarborough driving number 11, a Chevrolet. And Jackie Stewart and I call the race this way. Two cars going in there. Underneath there goes Kale Yarbrough. Underneath Richard Petty. And he takes the lead with Richard Petty in behind there. A wonderful start for Kale Yarbrough after Richard has taken the initial start. Bobby Isaac moving up into a challenging position with Kale Yarbrough, number 11. Here comes David Pearson, the pole center at number 21 in the Woods Brothers Mercury, and David Pearson made his move, going into turn number three, picking off the draft of Richard Petty, and he moved up into the lead. Dave Richard Petty running very strong in practice. In practice late yesterday, had trouble with an engine. He changed the engine and started the race with an engine that he had never run in competition, never run in serious practice. So he hung on very well. And Richard Petty running in third place, picking up the draft, moving up alongside of Cale Yarborough. And David Pearson leading the back. David Pearson having been a most dramatic figure all week long as he participated in the International Race of Champions, which you saw yesterday. Had some bad luck there, but came to the racetrack this morning feeling that things would be much better for him. And he jumped into the lead after one lap with Richard Petty running right behind him, two and three of the most famous names in racing. Pearson, Petty, and Yarborough. With the Allison brothers running in contention as well, Bobby and Donnie, both driving very fast, smooth, performing automobiles. And Jackie, at the end of the first lap, it looked like it might have been a 20-car draft coming around, running in groups of 10 and 10. Absolutely terrific. Petty really is as close to a racing car as you can possibly get. Richard Petty really is in tight behind Pierce. Wonderful motor racing. Petty staying closer to the wall than I've ever seen any racing driver doing. This is his speedway. He really seems to be king of this speedway. And at this time, of course, David Pearson really is in the lead. After setting the pole position time, as everyone expected, we're seeing three of the greatest superstars in speedway racing really up front. Bobby Isaac moving up into the number four position as David Pearson continues to lead with Petty behind him and Cale Yarborough. And running that close, Bobby Isaac in the number four position getting a definite benefit from the draft as Bobby Allison begins to move up and they close it up into what amounts to a ten-car draft. Bobby Isaac, the man who was supposed to have retired from motor racing up there in the first four already. This is one way of getting out of motor racing. <laughs> I'm afraid it's not my way, but he's doing very well. Bobby Isaac continuing his bold move, and back in the back, you see the movement of A.J. Foyt. A.J. Foyt, who started way back in the number 35 position, bolting past car after car after car. Foyt running very high up on the racetrack and benefiting from the draft, but able, apparently, with sufficient horsepower. We've got a man off the track, Herschel McGriff. Zero four is off the racetrack. Herschel McGriff is into the bank. Herschel well, McGriff piled it up on the back straight. One of the men that was setting the pace in practice, he's still in the car. He's not getting out of the motor car. He hit the bank very hard, but he seems to be all right. That was the way it was off the start earlier today at the Daytona 500, Daytona International Motor Speedway. From the Daytona International Motor Speedway, it's the Daytona 500. Brought to you by Goodyear, makers of the custom steel guard radial tires. And by Champion Spark Plug Company, makers of better plugs for everyone. We'll begin live coverage of the richest stock car race in history in just a moment. All right, Chris, thank you very much. And there you see the live picture in color from the Daytona International Motor Speedway. And we've got a car off the racetrack coming off turn number one. Hits the fence, bangs around, and Jimmy Herdebees gets back onto the racetrack. Yeah, Jimmy Herdebees came off in turn number four there, spun round, hit the retaining wall, and is sitting in the wrong direction of the racetrack at the moment. I hope he realizes what direction he has to go, but he is back there. Jim Herdebees, a great regular of motor racing. He's got a bent fender, as you can see, in 
the left-hand side of the car. We're going to go into slow-mo, and here he comes down, spinning through the infield, heading straight for that wall. He keeps the car spinning, tries to collect it. Looks like he's going to get there. Then there's the barrier. You can see the barrier coming up. He kisses the barrier very hard indeed. Comes back out towards the racetrack and points up in the wrong direction. Not the place to pass. And the yellow flag, of course, is out, and once the caution is out, all of the leaders, in fact, everybody possible, will hit the fence as you look at this live picture along pit road as Richard Petty was in the lead when Jimmy Herdebees had his moment of misfortune. Richard Petty having run very strong so far in the Daytona 500, a race that he has won four times. Donnie Allison is on the racetrack right now, and he is in the lead, and Donnie Allison has also been running very, very well. The Daytona 500 this year, in actuality, the Daytona 450. Because of the energy crisis, many of the races around the world have been trimmed back, and certainly Bill France and his people here at Daytona were among the first to announce they would concur with a request for the conservation move. So Richard Petty is back on the racetrack and running under a yellow. We have had a lot of yellows, Jackie. We've had, uh, well, 10 automobiles involved in moments of misfortune. And here you see the, the grand collection heading down pit road. There has been an enormous amount of trouble today. A.G. Point brings his car in through the pits, one of the greatest racing drivers in the world today. A.G. Point, very versatile racing driver, getting the car wiped off. There's been a lot of debris around, a lot of paper flying. That wiping off of the front radiator is to, to, to help the cooling of the car so that none of the papers or anything else is clogging up the radiator cooling. They're trying to get A.G. away, and there, of course, is Donnie Allison pulling out of the pits as well, one of the best crews in the business. And A.G. Point also leaves with the tire smoking, accelerating as hard as he can back into the racetrack. All right, looking down at the standings now. A.J. Point, number 50, Donnie Allison, number 88, Cuckoo Marlin, number 14, and Cuckoo Marlin's been a surprise today. He's been running with the leaders all the way. Number 43, Richard Petty, dropping back to the fourth spot after the pit stop. And Gary Bettenhausen in the Matador, number 16, is in the fifth position. The leadership, of course, of the race will change around quite a bit because of the pit stops as Benny Parsons moves up there right now. We'll have more live coverage in a moment. Live from Daytona International Motor Speedway, the yellow caution light is out as a result of Jimmy Herdemies having an accident coming out of turn number four. And the leadership of the race has been shuffling quite a bit as we have now completed 116 laps of the 450 mile race. And have a look here at the people who are out of the race so far. Herschel McGriff, 04, went out because of an accident. Richard Childress, car number 96, went out. Dan Daughtry, number 35, went out of the accident as a result of the banging and then lost it. Joe Mahalik, number 60, went out of the race because of mechanical troubles. Charlie Glotz back out because of mechanical problems. David Pearson, Ran over something, caused damage to the bottom of his car. Number 21, the pole sitter, he is out of the race. Tony Bettenhausen, the younger of the Bettenhausen brothers, running in this race. Number 9, he's out of it. Bobby Allison has blown an engine or something mechanical went wrong. Big puff of smoke took him out of the race. One of the favorites. And number 70, J.D. McDuffie, also had some mechanical trouble, which took him out at lap 105. Those are the people who are out of the race as of this moment. And the leadership at the moment reflecting to us as uh, David Sisko, but that will change, I'm sure, as the pace car is off and we are racing again. <laughs> moving up into turn number one now, as the field begins to string out a little bit, it is Richard Petty moving back into the lead. Richard Petty, who has won it four times, has been... Very strong looking all day. One of the drivers that really knows how to motor race. A terrific performer at any time. He's, he's at Donny Allison. Donny Allison goes right into the lead. Passes Richard Petty on the back straight, going into number three. Donny Allison's been up here right from the very beginning. Donny's really excited about his car. He's been praising it all week to see how well it's been going, how pleased he is with the engine. And here you can see that he really is performing well to be up there with Richard. Richard's down below him. Coming into the dog leg, he's gone underneath Donnie and he takes the lead once again. A.J. Foyt, the veteran USAC driver out of Houston, Texas, remaining very much a part of the story as it begins to develop here at Daytona. The premier race of the super speedway season. Bobby Isaac, the veteran who retired last year, is also remaining very much 
in the picture. George Palmer has been performing very well so far, but up in front, you've got four fellows who are well known in Grand National Stock Car Racing. Richard Petty with Johnny Allison running right behind him. Then comes A.J. Foyt right there in car number 50. And Bobby Isaac, and there's a relationship of Foyt to the leaders. So you've got a lot of automobiles running in the same lap, some 16 of them, and they're close enough to challenge each other. Richard Petty staying very high in the speedway. He's been staying high all the way through this race. It's been most impressive to watch how close he gets to that wall. As another racing driver, I really admire that because it takes an enormous amount of concentration. When you get that close to a concrete wall at that sort of speed, it's not an easy feeling. And Richard Petty seems to have conquered this better than any other racing driver. I have a great admiration for him, particularly this ability he has to race. He has a balance of a race that is excellent. You see Donny Allison getting right up behind him again, closing the gap on him, trying to get him before he gets into turn three, but I don't think he's going to make it on this occasion. Richard again is higher, as you can see on the speedway, than Donny. Very high on the speedway indeed. He's been doing this through turn three and four throughout the entire event so far. Comes off turn four, very close to the wall. And we've had a switch back in third and fourth as Bobby Isaac has now passed A.J. Foyt to take over third place. So you've got two men up front, Donnie Allison and Richard Petty, and then right behind them you've got Bobby Isaac and A.J. Foyt having quite a duel. That blue stuff you see blowing around on the track, that is paper, and it's a concern to the drivers because some of that debris sometimes blows up onto the radiators and causes the automobile to overheat. We haven't noticed in particular anyone having overheating problems so far today. As you look at the fight now for third place, you see Bobby Isaac has opened up quite a margin over A.J. Meantime, back in front, it is Donnie Allison out of Hueytown, Alabama, the younger of the Allison brothers. He said he took his car off the truck when they arrived here at Daytona, rolled it onto the track, and it flew for him. Well, he's certainly showing up well now. I think Donnie Allison's been a happy man all this week as far as I'm concerned. Unfortunately, his brother Bobby has been quite so lucky. He's been complaining about an engine problem. Cale Yarborough has now passed A.J. Foyt, so A.J. is beginning to pull back off the pace a little bit for some reason. Well, I would say that's unusual for A.J. at this time. He may be becoming a little aware of something that's not quite right. Of course, he's giving himself a breather to be able to assess the situation. Any good racing driver should not just go in with his head down if he feels something. But look how close those racing cars are. Literally just inches away from each other. This is really super speedway motoring at its best. Allison driving the gold and blue car, number 88. Patty, of course, in the bright red and blue machine. Patty driving a Dodge. And Donnie Allison driving a Chevrolet. A.J. Ford beginning to drop back off the pace now. He is back in the number five position. Isaac is running in third. Cale Yarborough is 4.5. And George Homer is up there in the number six position. George Fulmer has been doing a very good job. He came to the Speedway as a rookie at uh, Super Speedway Motor Racing and has adjusted very, very well indeed. I think everyone must be very happy about George. He's really been performing very well throughout the weekend down here. And there he is, Richard Petty trying to get alongside. He's gone alongside. He's trying to make his pass and he's made his pass. He goes fast, going into number three. Richard Petty seems to be coming out of number two turn better than anyone else. He's been doing this gradually. He's been able to slingshot, going down the back stretch, and get in there before number three. Now the two leaders, Richard Petty and Donnie Allison, begin to stretch out the time and distance over the third and fourth race cars. That's a slower car that's about to be left going into turn number one. And you see the automobile that is traveling at a slower pace get down out of the way and let the hot rods go by. And Richard Petty sailing along, running very high to the wall, as you see, and Donnie Allison for the moment sitting right in behind him. This racetrack, in fact, is very dusty, as you'll probably be able to see in some of the shots, the long shots there, you'll see the paper and debris flying around. The racetrack this year is, of course, fresher than it's been before because the 24-hour race of Daytona was not held this year, so there's a lot of loose, small gravel and stone around, around the racetrack. There you see the standings at this time. In first position, Richard Petty. In second position, Donny Allison. Third, Cale Yarborough. Bobby Isaac in fourth. A.J. Point in fifth position. We'll be back right after this. You're watching live coverage of the Daytona 500 from the Daytona International Motor Speedway, the richest stock car race ever run, some $75,000 in prize money. Donnie Allison leading Richard Petty behind him. 
Keel Yarborough has now moved up into third place, having moved past Bobby Isaac, and A.J. Fort now is running number five with George Fulmer sitting back in the number six position. And Donnie Allison is pulling Petty right now. Petty was pulling Donnie a moment ago. Here on pit road, Chris Economaki. Right, Keith. What we're seeing on the track right now is a case of bitter rivals becoming friendly uh, competitors on the track. Allison and Petty have hooked up to draft together. They're doing it very well, and this combination of two cars has allowed them to pull away from the field. They'll break this, of course, near the end and race to the checker if it, main if it is maintained that law. All right, Chris, thank you very much. George Fulmer running number six, Darrell Waltrip is seven, Ramo Stott is running eight, and Gary Bettenhausen is running nine. Bettenhausen driving one of the small engine matadors, and here goes Petty coming off the draft and uses the slingshot to go whipping past Donny Allison again. It has appeared to us several times during the course of the race as we work lap number 127 that Richard Petty appears a bit loose as he goes very high on the track. Of course, Richard has always liked to run high, He's a racing driver who set his car up for the race here at Daytona. I think this is, again, the, the hallmark of a good racing driver. He doesn't always set it up for practice. And, of course, no one knows this racetrack better as far as the competitors are concerned than Richard Petty. Of course, the characteristic of those race cars are slightly different from most others. Even the USAC drivers wheel the race car in a slightly different way. Richard Petty certainly is wearing his very comfortably today. Here comes Donnie Allison down that back straight now, and they're getting up around 186 miles an hour as they whip down that long straight. They go into turn number three, the turns here at Daytona on this two-and-a-half-mile super speedway, banked at 31 degrees, and the banking down here in front of the grandstand, which makes this a tri-oval, which has a little kink in it, is banked at 18 degrees. So they can come down off turn number four, they hit a little bump there, and then they go into banking, as you see, of 18 degrees across the start-finish line, make a bit of a left turn, and then plummet on for turn number one. Teddy the leader, Allison. Gail Yarborough now is running in third place. He started the race very strong, as you saw at the beginning of our program, the relationship of third place to the leaders, as Allison and Petty continue to push and pull each other using the aerodynamics of drafting, and they're stretching out the lead over third place, Cale Yarrow, Yarborough, because Cale's back there running kind of by himself right now. Cuckoo Marlin now has moved up into the number five position as A.J. Foyt appears to be having some trouble with his car, and he is slowing down. Not terribly noticeably, except in the standings where some of the other fellows who have been running very quick today are beginning to get by him. Yep. The lead, the lead we've got between the second man and the third man is above six, six seconds. I just got it even slightly above seven seconds on that last lap. They certainly are pulling out an advantage because, of course, they are slipstreaming each other. This means that the lead car is getting good acceleration. The second man is coming up close behind them, just as you've seen just now. Slip past to go faster in to turn three there, going round turn three cleanly. And Richard Petty then picks up the draft, as you can see. It means that the car in front is getting good cornering here. He's getting good aerodynamics on that corner. Petty then tucks back in again, right behind Donny Allison as they come through this kick here and the tri-oval as they go heading towards turn one again. The chances are as they come off turn two, Petty will again slingshot and get past. And doing this, of course, they are being able to pull away from Kiel Yarbrough, who's having to break all the air himself. There's no one else slipping around there with him. A.J. Foyt is too far behind him at this time to help him in any way. And there you see A.J. on the high banking there, all in his own. And when a car is in that con condition, you see the relationship right back up to the leaders again. But the, the difference there is that you're seeing that car having to break the gear itself and it's having to push an awful lot of air, particularly in a day when it's very gusty and windy. And we're told we have 11 cars now running in the same lap. 11 automobiles in the same lap. As we're working lap number 131. Uh, there's kind of an interesting thing here. Here we see now the relationship of the two lead cars in A.J. Foyt as uh, Foyt has lost a great deal of time and distance. And a man who was buried back there in the pack who looked like a while ago he was going to take a run at somebody, George Fulmer, has not been able to work himself out of traffic as yet. So A.J. is out there running all alone right now while the leaders 
are up there pulling and pushing each other by drafting Petty and Allison and Donnie Allison is the leader at the moment. You see Kale Yarborough now beginning to move up again as he goes through traffic and Kale slowed down for a while. It seemed as if he might be having some kind of trouble, but whatever it was during one of the pit stops, they apparently have been able to cure it as Petty leads Allison over the start finish line. That is one of the slower cars right there coming along behind them. It's Cuckoo Marlin and Kale Yarborough now in the Dyke for third place as Cuckoo passes him and dropping Kale back to fourth with Bobby Isaac continuing in fifth. A.J. Boyd back in sixth. And we have George Fulmer sitting up there in the number seven position at this moment. Now Richard Petty is going to get some pressure again from Donnie Allison. Allison going low and Petty there in the red blue is going to hold his lead as he trips up towards the top of the wall. Coming out of turn number four. There's the fight now for third and fourth. The red and gold car that is Cuckoo Marlin. And Cale Yarborough is in the white and red car. Cale Yarborough has been sort of seesawing up and down in the pace today. He's been very competitive one moment and then he seems to drop back a little bit, stay there for a little while and then attack. It seems that he's playing a peculiar game. He has, of course, been using the yellow a lot and therefore there has, there has been many yellows today, so therefore he's been gaining his position as the yellows come out. It's interesting to note, too, the veteran from Columbia, Tennessee, Marlon started 31st on the grid today. But as a result of accidents and yellow lights, he's moved up steadily as Gary Battenhausen is in with a Matador. Now this car running on a smaller engine and, a, I believe, a smaller gas capacity. Yes, the small Matador, of course, has been looked after very well now by another retired racing driver, Mark Donahue, who's, of course, looking after that Penske racing team now in the Matador. As the two leaders go streaking past, Richard Petty still holding a marginal lead over Donny Allen. Richard Petty is the leader. Donny Allison is second. Cuckoo Marlin third. Followed by Cale Yarborough and Bobby Isaac as you watch the Daytona 500 on ABC. Donny Allison driving Chevy number 88 leading the Dodge number 43 driven by Richard Petty. Allison and Petty up there pulling and pushing aerodynamically with Cuckoo Marlin running in third place. Cale Yarborough is fourth and Bobby Isaac is in fifth spot. Coming up next on ABC, right after our Daytona 500, the American Sportsman. And later today, ABC's Wide World of Sports will be the National Finals Rodeo from Oklahoma City. Bobby Isaac, number 27, is in the pit. That'll move A.J. Boyd up a notch as Isaac comes in under the green, giving up fifth place. Isaac came into the pit lane very, very slowly. I would say Isaac's got a problem here. He just appeared very slowly. They're trying to pull out the fender. He's obviously been in contact with something during the race. They're playing around with the front end there as well as the back end, and I'm afraid his pace into the pit didn't look good. Now, they were doing the same thing a moment ago for Gary Bettenhausen, bending some sheet metal, so it could be that Bettenhausen and Isaac touched somewhere around the racetrack, and we've had a lot of fender bending already today. And we may have a lot more before it is done, but the way these two men are running right now, they are dominating the field. Donnie Ellison and Richard Petty. Here comes Petty making a move. And Richard gets the lead again. 275 thousand dollars for the Daytona 500 this year. I started to say a little while ago, the scoreboard was advanced 20 laps at the beginning of the race. Cale Yarborough now moves back into third place, passing Cuckoo Marlin. But everybody who's ever been coming to Daytona and all of those who have ever worked here have always been used to having 200 laps signify end of the race. So that's why they started the scoreboard today, 20 laps ahead. They became, as Chris mentioned, a question of whether or not the first 20 laps would be the most exciting or the last 20. They decided to keep the last 20. The race cut by 50 miles because of racing adherence to the request from the federal government to participate in the conservation of fuel. Hill Yarborough and Cuckoo Marlin doing some drafting themselves as they contest each other for third and fourth place. The reduction in distance here, of course, is another example, as Keith says, that uh, everyone's trying to do their little part in the energy crisis in 
Britain and the rest of Europe, of course, are looking at it in exactly the same way. Motor racing is an international sport, one of the few truly international sports, and of course the energy crisis is also international. So motor racing has been doing its part. Motor racing really should not be treated any differently than any other sport, or for that matter any other industry, because it is an industry as well as it being, being a large spectator sport. In Britain, they've reinstated many of the races that they first thought of cancelling, in France, they've reinstated them again. The South African Grand Prix that was cancelled because of it has, in fact, been reinstated and will take place. So, therefore, all around the world, they're looking seriously at motor racing, and motor racing is going along with everybody concerned. So, I think we're all looking the right way towards this energy thing. Cale Yarborough and Cuckoo Marlin, Yarborough number 11 and Marlin number 14, with Yarborough holding third place right now, and Cuckoo really running a strong race. Setting the field for you, we have Richard Fetty holding the lead with Johnny Allison now in second place as they continue to swap the leadership. Neil Yarborough, Cuckoo Marlin, George Fulmer, Darrell Waldrop, and A.J. Foyt. This is a great race that's going up, up, up front here between Donny Allison and Richard Fetty as Donny gets passed into the lead once again. But this can't go, on, can't go on for a great deal longer. They're going to have to come in and pit. There hasn't been a yellow for quite a long time. They're going to have to come in and refuel. And when that pit stop happens, obviously the draft, the slipstreaming is going to have to stop. And then it's a race against the clock to see who can get out quickest of those two. And pit stops here at this Daytona International Speedway are fantastic. One of the most impressive things for me as a foreigner coming over to America is the pit crews. The work that they do is slicker and better than anywhere else in the world. Absolutely impressive. Allison and Petty continuing to lead the field. Benny Parsons, who has been running among the leaders, has hit the pits. He's had to come in under green. We're anticipating a pit stop for Donnie Allison right about in about eight laps from now. And you see the average speed with these leaders running up between, depending on the individual laps and the traffic that they encounter, somewhere between 185 and 190 miles an hour. And that is very quick. Now, that's running down the straight. Of course, they come off of it just a little bit as they go through the turns, but they're up into the middle 70s going through these 31-degree turns. Most of the speed that's lost on the turns is through scrubbing speed off, is cornering forces rather than the driver lifting off in any way. It's a question of scrubbing speed off. And here you see how high they run in the banking, really up against that wall. Gail Yarborough is in third place, and Cuckoo Marlin runs four. George Fulmer and Daryl Waldrip are continuing their struggle back in there, along with A.J. Foyt, trying to move up. Of course, in NASCAR Grand National Racing, under a yellow light, caution light, everybody closes up. So when someone like... Petty and Allison get well off in front. Those who are back in there and perhaps caught in traffic and not able to move, make the kind of a move they would like to, have to start hoping that sooner or later there will be another caution light. That will enable them to close up behind the leaders. And also in NASCAR Grand National Racing, when there is a caution flag, you continue racing around the racetrack until you reach the start-finish line. So Benny Parsons apparently is having some trouble as he is coming in now for another pit stop. He has made one, has gone out, made one lap, and had to come back in as Donnie Allison runs right in behind Richard Petty, and they are 1-2 in the Daytona 500. Two first-rate drivers here. This, of course, makes it a great deal com more comfortable for both of them. They're running against each other, but at the same time, they know each other's abilities, and this helps a great deal. Richard Petty with a car as close as Donny Allison is right now has to be very sure of the man he's with. The concentration at this time from a racing driver's point of view is completely intense. He's absolutely plugged into nothing else. When you're that close at that speed, going around a high banked oval of that kind, you've got to be plugged in right up to the 10 10 fashion. Both, both of those racing drivers, the concentration must be incredible at this time. And Cale Yarborough in third, Marlin in four. They are about 12 plus seconds back of the leaders. So they are losing time and distance with each lap running under the green. So they were seven seconds. And in the course of five laps, they have lost about a second a lap. So they're now better than 12 seconds back of the leaders. 
Well, of course, if a yellow does come out, this is going to affect that. It's going to allow them to close back up. But, of course, then you come into the gambling situation because will they wait for a yellow or will they come in and pit to get their fuel in a green light? If they do that and a yellow comes out just after it, of course, it complicates matters and really loses a great advantage for them. So, really, it's a little bit of Russian roulette here. They can't go on too long, of course, or they will run out of petrol altogether. And here's how they stand at the Daytona 500. Richard Petty slipping back into the lead over Donnie Allison with Cale Yarborough holding third, Kukumal at four, and Daryl Waldron now running in the number five position as he has moved past A.J. Foyt. It looks to me like Richard Petty's going to come into the pitch. He's very low in the banking. Indeed he is. He's coming in. He's slowed down an awful lot. He's slowed down more than I would like to see him as he comes into the pit. He comes in. One of the reasons, Jackie, his pit is the first one you hit there, so he had to take a lot of his speed off coming off turn number four. And there he is. Draws to a halt. I've got to watch on him to see, him, see how quick he's going to be. They're jacking up one side of his car. They're putting the fuel in, of course. They're cleaning again the radiators. They're cleaning the gauzes there to make sure that nothing's blocking up and stopping the, the cool air from getting in there. A lot of work being done. The car's off into the way. 19 seconds. He doesn't lose any time at all. 19 seconds and he pulls away, but of course he's come in and a green. So therefore, if by any chance now a yellow light comes on, Richard Petty is going to be the loser in this. But at least Donny Allison out on his own. DJ Foyt also comes into the pit. Ramo Scott, who's been running among the leaders, he's also in the pit under a green. AJ is changing the other set of tires, the outside tires. Here's Chris on pit road. Okay, AJ Foyt is in. Johnny Rutherford, a fellow Texan whose car is already out of the race, is standing by with his helmet on. But AJ says no, he's going to stay in when he wants a chassis adjustment. This is every stop AJ made, this was a quick one. He's gone. The back end of his car is pushed in. He apparently been hit behind. They adjusted the chassis again on AJ Foyt's number 50. He's in and out in very quick time. Johnny Allison is the leader as you watch the Daytona 500 live at In Color on ABC. Johnny Allison leads. Cale Yarborough runs second. The leader, Cuckoo Marlin. He assumed the lead when Johnny Allison and Richard Petty took their pit stop. Now he has had to come in under a green, so we get again a shuffling of the lead. AJ Ford was also into the pit. And Ramo Stott. Gained some advantage with the leaders having to come in, so he moves back up. George Palmer is another man who profits from it, and so does Darrell Waldron. But remember, those gentlemen also are facing pit stops in the very near future. The fastest pit stop of that group was, un was undoubtedly the man you're watching now, Richard Petty, who went in about 19 seconds. The other ones were averaging 22 to 25 and even 26 seconds by A.G. Foyt. But Richard Petty, the man you're seeing right at the top of the banking at this time, Coming through number four, coming off the high bank, into the front stretch, certainly did a very quick job in the pitch. Richard Petty driving the very easily identified blue and very strong red car. Double checking the standings now as the leaders begin to move through the traffic and move back up into their positions, you can see. The veteran from Randleman, North Carolina, who has won the Daytona 500 four times. He is the only man ever to do that. Herschel McGriff, who went out very early in the race in an accident on the back straight, returning to Grand National Racing, at one time ran against Richard's father, Lee Petty. They put on some fair-sized wars down this part of the country a few years ago. We've had a lot of action here at Daytona today, but we're very happy to say no one's been really injured at all. None of the accidents caused injury, and this is always a relief to everyone I know who watches at home, as it is to the racing drivers, even like me, who sit up in the commentary box. We've noticed, too, a lot of skidding along pit road today, as Bill Dennis, number 90, just slides in there, and he almost kissed the wall. Bill Dennis won the 300-miler uh, here yesterday for a third successive time, but he's had his problems today. A tire running across the racetrack being stopped by a fireman there. Of course, when they do come in and lock up wheels like that, it's not a very healthy situation. It means that they've got to change tires, whether they like it or not, because they've got flat spots on the tires because they've been locked up at high speed. And this, of course, is a potentially very dangerous thing. 
Jackie Stewart, Chris Economaki, and I'm Keith Jackson here at Daytona International Motor Speedway, and you're watching for the very first time live color coverage of the Daytona 500. And here's the way they stack up through five. Richard Petty, the leader. Donnie Allison back in second place now. Gail Yarborough is running third. Cuckoo Marlin is four, and Remo Stott. But Keokuk, Iowa, is holding on the number five position. That's Donnie Allison right there in the blue and gold car. He is the pursuer of Richard Petty, but Richard is pretty much out there all alone right now. Richard Petty staying high on the banking as ever. He goes into the back straight and he comes up behind Richard Brooks in the, in the Simonized car, right up behind the car, gets through on the outside. Brooks lets him through, as of course he should do. Good manners on the track, very kind indeed. Goes straight into number three and stays up high again. And Cuckoo Marlin apparently having a problem because he's back in the pits under green. And Richard Petty comes working around. And we'll put a clock on it to give you the time differential between the leader, Petty, and the pursuer, Donnie Allison. When the clock stops at the bottom of your picture, it's five and a half seconds difference. So Richard Petty leading by five and a half seconds over Donnie Allison. And that's just about the difference in the pit stop times. Now, this is how important pit work is in any motor race, but here at Daytona, it's a big, big important thing. And there, Richard Petty's crew really did get him out to have a big advantage. A.J. Ford is going to benefit from Cuckoo Marlin having jumped into the pits under green again, and we've gone through a long period of green, hard running. Here's Chris with a comment about Marlin. Well, the best... The pit crew here for Cuckoo Marlin are furious. They were, the car was black flagged. He said that one of the lug nuts was loose. The last time it came in, it had wheels put on. And one of the stewards said that one of the nuts, the nuts like the very safety conscious here, said to bring the car back in, tighten one nut, and send them out again. It cost them several thousand dollars. It's better to be sure than to sorry, however. If a wheel comes off, it might even cost a few more thousand dollars. So I think it's better that way than the other way. But of course, this is the importance of security, and the officials here keep a very tight eye on everything that goes on. Cale Yarborough now, we're told, as uh, our timers have put watches on him, Cale Yarborough may be running the quickest of everybody out on the racetrack right now. He's sitting in third place. Petty hitting the back straight at about 180, 181, but Yarborough has been running it up around 184. Of course, it depends on how well the car performs through the turns as well, and Richard Petty has been driving very well. Early, we thought he might be a little bit loose, as we said, but so far, there's no indication that it has grown more pronounced. It is Petty leading. Allison is second by about five seconds. Cale Yarborough runs third, A.J. Ford four, and Ramos Stott is five. Number 43, 1974 Dodge with Richard Petty. Willing it is the leader here in the Daytona 500. And we'll be right back with more. Later today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, actor James Kahn joins Jim McKay for the National Finals Rodeo in Oklahoma City. Howard Cosell and Don Meredith will be in Dallas, Texas for live coverage of a spectacular jump by motorcycle daredevil Evo Knievel. Later today on ABC's Wide World of Sports at 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central, and Pacific Time over most of these ABC stations. And Richard Petty continues to lead with Donnie Allison in second place, Cale Yarborough, third, A.J. Ford, four, Ramo Stott is number five, and George Fulmer, who has been hanging around that six, seven, eight, and nine spot, has not been able to make much of a move as yet. Under the green, full bore, here's Chris. Well, the exploding engine in one car sent this shrapnel-like piece of metal flying across the track through Jackie Rogers' windshield and into his shoulder. He was taken to the hospital and is resting there now. He is not seriously injured. This was the third windshield to go out in the race today. The debris on the track has been tremendous and quite a hazard to the competitors. All right, Chris, and among the things that have fallen down have been pieces of sheet metal, have been mufflers, have been a little bit of, I guess, everything, headers, all kinds of things dropping off. This is the sort of thing that could be expected to happen at the beginning of any season in motor racing. The cars are never really as comfortable at this time of the year as they are later on in the year when they've had a lot more running. You know, when David Pearson came to this racetrack, as we see, by the way, Richard Petty getting through some traffic up there, very high in the banking and getting over the top, 
going to go around those cars. He's gone over one and is going to try and get under the others. That's Foyt. He's about to lap A.J. Foyt and George Fulmer there in the blue and white car sitting right in front of A.J. So Richard now is really moving it out. And he has already lapped uh, Remo Stott. If he gets by A.J., it looks like he's going to. At about the same time, he's also going to go up high, and he's going to make it. Yeah, he's got A.J., and now he's going to get past George, George. Fulmer, of course. That shouldn't be such a big problem because George has got the smaller engine in his car now. He's got a 366 in his car, and I think you're going to see him moving over. George has moved over to let Richard Petty through. Now, but here's the problem, Jackie, for George Fulmer and A.J. Foyt. Now that Richard has put them a lap down, they are not in a posture of being able to move up should there be a yellow. They'll have to remain a lap down until there is more green. And I'm sure it's not gone out of uh, Richard Petty's notice. Bettenhausen is back in the pits in the Matador. He has had a skirmish either with a couple of cars or with a wall because they have bent some sheet metal, I think, each time that he's come in. Yep, they've been doing a little bit of repairing. But as I said earlier on about the cars, perhaps not being quite so well prepared for racing as they would be later in the season, this was evident with... Uh, with Pearson, David Pearson came to the speedway and he only had 24 miles on the car when he went into the first qualifier for the 500. Now that's not very many miles on any car. With, of course, the energy situation, they had been cutting down in practice and cutting down in testing. And this sort of thing allows things to fall off a motor car. And as we've seen, there's been a lot of debris around, a lot of motor cars falling apart, and a lot of mechanical failures. But after all, it is the first race of the season at the Super Speedway. Donnie Ellison is running in second place right now. We have three cars in the same lap. Richard Petty, Donnie Ellison, and Dale Yarborough with A.J. Ford and Ramo Stott fourth and fifth, a lap down as a result of Petty having passed them. And so far, Donnie Ellison has not been able to close in on Richard Petty. And the green continues to shine as we come up on 37 laps to go. The preparation and the Petty organization is tremendous. This, of course, is probably why he's, so, he's won so many races. Not only is he a great racing driver, but, of course, he's a great preparation man. His entire crew are absolutely first class. Betty running smoothly, evenly, cleanly. Not a hint of a problem anywhere. He's had superb work from his pit crew all day. David Pearson left the race at lap number 57. Charlie Glotzbach went out at lap number 58. They're two veterans who figured to run with most anybody. One of the surprises has been Cuckoo Marlin, but Cuckoo has had his problem. Carol Yarborough, having a little handling trouble, has backed off the pace, and he is, he's going to be out of here as he took a spin and dropped down. So let's have a look at Yarborough's problem. Low motion. Very high in the banking, he's very high in the banking, and he loses it, he goes sideways down there, he's heading down the hill, but he's still staying very high as the car almost stays parallel to the wall, and now he goes down, he starts to straighten the car out, he's getting the back end back in again, the rear end of the car is back in, but of course when that happens, it's a very difficult thing to control, and you saw a man controlling something right at the limit, now he's come back in, and he's going down pit lane. So I'm quite sure he's got flat spots on his tires as a result of having lost it at high speed near the top of the wall. There is no yellow because there was no one around Kale at the time. He was running pretty much alone, and the right side tires are being changed. The leader is Richard Petty. Johnny Allison in second place four after this. Two cars in the same lap now, Richard Petty and Donnie Ellison, A.J. Foyt. is running in third spot. He is a lap down. Ramos Stott running fourth. He is a lap down. Daryl Waltrip, number 95, is also a lap down in number five position. Here's Chris again. Well, the track is a veritable junkyard. Lenny Pond, you were knocked out by debris, right? Yeah, Chris, we went down front straight away, and I hit something with it. Left front tire, when I went in number one, it just grabbed right up in the wall, and and I didn't hit the wall too hard. I heard the car bad, but it, it broke its way by in the rear, and it just put us out to race. Look at what the debris does to the tires on these racing cars when they run over the litter on the track. It's quite a dangerous situation with debris on the track. Back to you, Keith. 
All right, Chris, the leader is Richard Petty, Donnie Allison in second place. They're the only two cars in the same lap now as we've had a very long green. Things have settled down. Let's have a look at what happened in lap number 29 coming out of turn number four. This was earlier today. And suddenly, as the field moves through there, moving without incident for quite some time, bang, three automobiles were involved in quite a striking piece of action. This sort of action coming out of turn four is a very difficult one to look after, but when you come around there with a situation that's very light in a racing car early in a race, you know, you're very competitive, you're in tight traffic, and of course when situations of that crop up, and there you see the spin, there's a car spinning in the inside, there's a car spinning up there in the middle of the road, but there's one in the centre there also that you haven't been able to see for the smoke, which hits very hard. One of the cars there continuing into the pit, and the other car's really starting, trying to make it back. Dan Daughtry was the man who was taken out of the race at that point. L.D. Ottinger in car number 02 was involved in it, and Tony Bettenhausen in car number 9 was able, able to somehow spin his way through there and, and made no contact with anybody. Bettenhausen and Ottinger were able to stay in the race for some time, and you see number 9 spinning there free, but it was Daughtry who really took the wallop, and he had to leave the race at that point. That happened coming off turn number 4 in the 29th lap, earlier today. Now we're back live and George Fulmer is out of it. George Fulmer has climbed out of his car. He is through racing for the day. So let's have a look at what happened to George Fulmer that took him out of it. He starts to spin one of those big spins. He's really down in the infield now. He's very low. He must have hit something very hard because he's right down. Up. He's going back up the speedway. Back up the speedway. The car looks very light and he's really going to hit that concrete wall is awfully hard. He hits it hard, he hits it the rear, he hits the front. He's running along parallel. This is a great way to start the speedway off at, at Daytona. This is his first experience here at the speedway, and I'm sure at this, at this very minute he's not enjoying it. Sliding down the speedway again. Luckily, no other traffic getting in his way. The car passes above him, the red streak on the left and the right hand side of the screen. So that's the end of George Comer's 500 mile race here at Daytona for this year. A driver who's been very versatile throughout his career. He's found his way here, and this, of course, is a sad day for him now. But Richard Petty is in the pits. The yellow caution light, of course, is on after George Fulmer's car, and who knows what might have caused it. He might have hit something. He might have dumped some oil on the track and blown an engine. Suspension might have been a problem. Donnie Allison is getting out of pit road. One of the crew members there, I'm not sure whether he was exulting or whether he had forgotten to do something, but. Here comes uh, Allison coming up, and Petty tried to pass him on pit road, and he can't do it. Tony Allison had the better pit stop that time. What a motor race on the pit road. <laughs> so that's what can happen to you when you come in for a drink of water and repair. Donnie Allison slipped in, and now we know that that Allison crewman was exulting with joy as his man was first out. Very happy people. Allison is the leader. Petty is in second place. A.J. Ford running third a lap down, followed by Richard Brooks and Darrell Waldron here at the Daytona 500, the richest stock car race in history. The yellow light is on. We'll be back with more after this. Donnie Allison gives up the lead under yellow to hit the fence. Here's Chris. For this second pit stop, not for gas, they've just put maybe a quart in, put the change the right side tires. A few moments ago, they changed the left side tires. He'll have four new tires and ready to race right to the checkered flag. He's going to have his hands full with Richard Petty. There's enough gas, they say, to go the distance. However, many say that a car cannot get uh, 32 laps or 31 laps out of a tank full. Only time will tell. George Former being George's mount being pulled off the track. Richard Petty, of course, reassuming the lead as Donnie Allison came. And let's go back to that former moment on the track with Jackie Stewart. We see Fulmer's car here. As we're going in a normal speed, we can see the second car. He starts to spin, and something flies out. Now, something flies out in that case, and I think it's the windshield. The windshield seems to have popped out of that car in the middle of its spin. It's gone up the hill, hit the wall, stayed on the wall, then fallen back out. Now, something definitely flew out of that car there that probably caused this accident. It looked like the windshield. Richard Petty cruising around under yellow as we continue our live coverage of the Daytona 500 with Donnie Allison in second place. 
And, of course, under the yellow, Donnie Allison having made his second pit stop. Now, both these men have four new tires. Both these men have full tanks of gas. And Allison, under the yellow, will be allowed to close right up in behind him. So when we get a restart, it will be a dandy with a crowd. Who knows how many is here? I don't think anybody could count them at this point, but it's in excess of 100,000 people. They found a way to get here, despite the energy crisis. And they have been blessed with exceptional weather because it's really been outstanding. Two cars in the same lap. Cale Yarborough is a lap down in third place. A.J. Ford a lap down in fourth place. And Ramo Stott a lap down in number five position. A.J. Ford won this race in 1972. He would dearly love to win another one. We have one car rolling very slowly down fifth road and barely making progress but he is off the racetrack and he is no problem it's jimmy crawford out of college park georgia number 22 there who lost power as he came into pit road and he's getting help from some crew people it looks like the energy crisis is running for him today and he's run out of petrol at this very time but anyway you see the pack has closed right up here as they're under the yellow as they're coming around in a very tight bunch indeed Superstars, which is normally seen at these hours on Sundays over most of these ABC stations, will be back next Sunday at its regular time and will be featuring the Winter Sports Stars. Great personalities out of the game of hockey, for example, including the NHL MVP Yvonne Cornwaille of the Montreal Canadiens. We'll have Carl Schranz, the great skier of Austria, and Art Schenk, the speed skater from Holland. They'll be among the participants next Sunday over most of these ABC stations in the Superstars. Howard Cosell and his sports magazine show will also return next Sunday at its regular time. Richard Petty is the leader here in the Daytona 500 as the cars bunch up now under the yellow caution. A.J. Ford is in third place. He is a lap down. Cuckoo Marlin has moved up into that number four position. It's hard to keep Cuckoo out of it this year. And he's a lap down. Richard Brooks, driving car number 32, is in the number five position. The pace car is off and the green is out again. Now watch it for your two leaders, Richard Petty and Donnie Allison, as they begin to work their way through the traffic. Petty is driving the number 43 car, white, red, and blue. Donnie Allison's in the blue and gold. There's Petty now, up near the top of the track, near the wall. That's A.J. Fort running right behind him, but A.J. is a lap down. Cale Yarborough is right behind A.J. now, and looks like he wants to make a move by him. And Richard picking up a little bit of a help there from... Cuckoo Marlin running up in front, and Cuckoo is now a lap down, but he's helping Richard right now. Meantime, back there in the traffic is Donnie Allison. He was not able to close right in behind Richard under the yellow. We can see how fortunate Richard Petty was to have a lap on E.G. Foyt and Kiel Yarborough, because if he had not been a lap up at this time, he could have closed right up under that yellow, and of course he could have been racing with them neck to neck again. As it is, he knows he's got a cushion of one lap, on a man like A.J. Foyt and a man like Kiel Yarbrough, and that's a very comfortable position to be in. Now, of course, he looks like he's got a straight, clean piece of road, and that, for Richard Petty, is a big, big help. Donnie Allison's making his way through. He's getting past Kiel Yarbrough there. He's passed at the same time A.J. Foyt. A.J. Foyt was boxed in. This is the sort of situation that can occur in these sort of speedways. You can get snookered behind the, the car and against the wall, but Richard Petty's got clean air and a clean racetrack, with no one in front of him to worry about. This must have helped him. There is one car between Allison and Petty. Petty there in front, another car between them, and here comes Donnie now. Donnie closing very quickly. Donnie Allison is number one for the Daytona 500. It's less than a second, only four tenths of a second separating first and second place. That's very little. I'm sure he's going to take over that second spot, and there he goes. He seems to have got through now. Yes, Donny Allison has got through past Cuckoo Marlin there, so although he's still second, he's also second in the road. 1971, Donny Allison finished second here at the Firecracker to Bobby Isaac. Donny won the Firecracker back in 1970, but he has not enjoyed that kind of success in the 500. David Pearson has been a dominant figure in the Firecracker 400, but he has long since gone from this one a race that he has never won. 
But the first man to win a million dollars in NASCAR Grand National Stock Car Racing, Richard Petty, is now feeling the presence of Donnie Allison. King Richard, as he's known as down here, I think is one of the most popular figures in motor racing. Donnie Allison, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the happiest racing drivers I've seen before a race during this weekend. As I said earlier, he really was content with his whole crew, his car and everything else. On the other hand, Teddy, of course, has so much experience. He's seeing his own car prepared in his own shop. He's got so much knowledge. Look at how very, very close they are. They're just within inches. These are really great drivers performing a very fine art. And we have 23 laps to go. It'll be 22 as they come out of turn number four and cross the start-finish line again. So once they come whipping across the line, there will be 22 laps to go in the Daytona 500. And it should be a battle to the wire. Running third, A.J. Fort is back in the number five spot now. A scale dropper passed in, and here comes Petty on the draft slingshotting, and he goes back into first place. The winner of this race will realize some $35,000 plus in the richest stock car race ever run, a total of $275,000 available to the competitors. Oh, Richard Petty's in trouble. He's on pit road. Lord. There's something very seriously gone wrong with him. Very serious. He would never have come in at that part of the, the racetrack. He'd never have cut through in front of the other traffic. He's got a problem. He's come in. Tire. Looks like a tire blew out. They're changing tires on the one side. They're doing a whole service job on them, but they're certainly working on one side. That was a very unusual move for him to make under those circumstances. And off he goes. Well, now, he's lost uh, more than a half lap to Donnie Allison. He is going out the exit of Pitt Road. Donnie Allison is in turn three. Allison has a lap on three, four, and five. And he has three quarters of a lap now on Richard Petty. So Richard Petty suddenly is bitten by bad luck. It looked like a tire blew. I don't know what it was, but something certainly went wrong at the... At the moment that I would not have chosen to come into the pit, but of course one does, doesn't know that unless you're in the seat itself, but he made a decision and he certainly made it a clear one, and then he went and got the work done. If he had done another lap and he was really in trouble, it could have cost him a lot more time, so he had the presence of mind to, uh, to really do his job there and then. But a lot of catching up to do now, he's really got to depend on some sort of yellow flag because he's a long way back. The relationship, as you can see, that's where Donny Allison is. He's got to catch up about two-thirds of the racetrack to get up behind Donny Allison again. Well, Chris Economacher reflected a while ago when both men made their pit stops to take on their gasoline and their tires, and the yellow caution gave them the opportunity to get the second set of tires. The only thing is that one yellow flag would erase that enormous difference that Donny Allison has in the lead position to Richard Petty. If a yellow came right up in there between now and the end of the race, Richard could get in within striking distance of Donny Allison in the lead, but he's got to rely on that. I'm sure he can't make it on the road. And Richard, my goodness, that's Kiel Yarborough. Kiel Yarborough unlapping himself from Donny Allison. Does this mean that Donny's taking it a little easier now? Easing off just a little bit? Because he hasn't got all that many laps to go, and it would be certainly wrong of him to charge and be aggressive at this time. I would imagine he'd be happy to have Kale run in front of him for just a little while. I'm sure he finds it as mild and disconcerting. He goes right back up in front of that pack. But uh, to get a little help and uh, get a little pull from Kale Yarborough at that point might come in handy. Your leader is Donnie Allison. He has more than a half lap lead over second place, Richard Petty. Now we're waiting with 16 laps to go. Here are the standings of the Daytona 500 with some 15 laps to go. Donnie Allison with a three-quarter lap lead over Richard Petty, and he has relapped Cale Yarborough. So Cale is running in the number three position right behind Donnie Allison there, but he is a lap down as our A.J. Fort, the fourth place car, and Richard Brooks, number 32, who is running in fifth spot right now. The last one of the prime pursuers to go off the racetrack out of the action was George Fulmer. We documented you that for you. And the man who is dominating it right now is Donnie Allison, and it's been a long time since Donnie Allison has tasted the sweetness, as you see Petty way back there. 
And you look across the racetrack and you see that Donnie Allison is very close in behind Richard Petty. So Richard right now having to run all alone, and Donnie did get a little help as A.J. Ford moves up now right alongside of Cale Yarborough and in behind Donnie Allison. A.J. can get by Allison. He would unlap himself. In fact, the difference now is about 39 seconds from Donnie Allison's position to the second place man, who's Richard Petty. 39 seconds is a long way to catch up on this speedway. But does Donnie Allison have enough time to go the rest of the way? They have completed 108, and let's see, we have 13 laps to go now as the scoreboard shows 187 complete. Of course, we locked off the top 20. For the sake of perspective, particularly for the 100,000 plus who came to watch, and for those of us who are used to calling Daytona complete at 200 laps on this two and a half mile high bank super speedway tri-oval. The wind was quite gusty earlier in the day, but that too has settled down, and it's a perfect afternoon for an automobile race as Donnie Allison continues to lead. Here's Chris. Here's Chris on pit road. We asked that Donnie Allison spit here. When was the last time he won a major race? Nobody on the crew knew. We went back to his wife, Patty, and asked her. She's not sure. She thinks it was Talladega in 1971. Back to you, Keith. All right, I'll take the opportunity to go into the record book and try to find out. We've got a yellow caution flag, and there is a break for Petty. Big break for Petty. The yellow flag's got to be out. There's a, a mechanical situation. They're still racing as far as the leaders are concerned until they get round here to the... Start finishing line, the NASCAR, they race to the start finishing line where the yellow flag is shown. So Donnie Allison is still on it. He's still racing as far as he's concerned until he gets that yellow. But this is going to give Richard Petty an opportunity to close right back up. And of course, allows a situation to happen. And there's someone nearly losing it it's there. It's Allison. And, and it's Allison. He's, and he's spinning. He's spinning right round. Donnie Allison's spinning round all the way through. I heard a concussion. I think he blew a tire. I think he ran over something on the racetrack. I heard a big bang, and it looked like he blew a tire. And Donnie's back on the racetrack. He's still keeping it on, and there we see it in slow motion. He has hit something. There's, a, there's something coming off it. It looks like a tire's come apart. And there you see him slowing from one side to the other, really fighting the car, really trying to keep it together. This one, a racing driver, his adrenaline is right up. He's on his fingertips of control in that car, right on his tiptoes, one way and another way, what I call a tank slapper, as in a motorcycle. He, then he goes round, he spins it. He realizes he's spinning. He's onto the grass now, very little adhesion from that grass. Tears the grass up. The car doesn't know what direction it's in at this time. The car's really on the grass and the slippery stuff. Well, he's got it running pretty well on the back straight as he's hunting pit road and is going to obviously try to get in here. In the meantime, I don't think Richard Petty is going to come in. We'll just wait and see. Chris, what do you think? Well, this is a remarkable coincidence. Two years ago, Donnie Allison was leading the Daytona 500, and the yellow flag came out, and he crashed. Here he's leading the Daytona 500, the yellow flag comes out, and he has a tire go out after running over some debris. How many times in a career does that happen to a man? So Donnie Allison is trying to get to pit road. Richard Petty is still out there running, and he's trying to put Allison a lap down right here. He just may do it. We'll be right back with more of the Daytona 500 in a moment. Donnie Allison getting out of pit road with good service, and it was definitely a tire that blew. There's one important thing to remember here. These tires, in fact, are safety tires. Goodyear introduced them some years ago, and in fact, there's an inner tire there that allows just the the setup to a car that Donny Allison had to rely on. Because in fact, when that outer tire went, the tire, the car was still controllable with that inner tire. And of course, the tire completely came off as they went down the back street as he was trying to go quickly. But in fact, I'm sure that saved the situation and for that matter, possibly saved the life of Donny Allison at this very high speed. So the caution light is still out as the safety crew goes down to have a look and see whether or not there is debris down there that caused Donnie's tire to let go. There's the caution flag waving at the start-finish line, and Richard Petty is sitting up in first place all alone. Everybody else is a lap down. A.J. Foyt is up in number 
two position now. He's a lap down. Cale Yarborough is three. Ramos shot four. Richard Brooks, five. And Donnie Allison should be back in about the number six position as a result of the pit stop. So you talk about racing luck. You've just seen a classic example of it. We have nine laps to go in the Daytona 500. We'll show them to you in a moment. Donnie Allison back on the racetrack after making another pit stop. Richard Petty has made another pit stop. Petty has still got him a lap down. Later today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, actor James Kahn and Jim McKay from the National Finals Rodeo in Oklahoma City. Howard Cosell and Don Meredith will be in Dallas, Texas as Evil Knievel will attempt to fly his motorcycle in a spectacular jump. ABC's Wide World of Sports at 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central and Pacific Time. Immediately following our coverage, live and in color of the Daytona 500 will be the American Sportsman. The yellow caution is still on. Let's go back to Donnie Allison's moment and show it to you again in slow motion. And there you see the bit of the tire falling off. The tire's already thrown its tread. He goes one way, and you can see him coming back. As we're running it back, you see that just behind the tire. The car, you see the tire coming off. The tire's beginning to shred, but remember there is a safety tire in here. And this is what's allowing Donnie Allison to control this car. However wild it might look, it's still an awful lot better than having nothing there at all. And you see a man literally saving his life here with a safety situation. And doing a rather fine piece of driving. Absolutely on his fingertips, right up with it. This is what it takes a driver. He's back in the pits again. Donny Allison is back in the pits. They're looking under the car. They're not quite sure what to do with Donny. He's gone straight off again. That's a very unusual stop. So the massive crowd here at the Daytona International Motor Speedway. And we've got a crash in turn number one under the yellow. I don't know what could have happened there. I don't know what could have happened there. Uh, Cisco, David Cisco's car there, 05. So we had some uh, banging around. Cisco looks like he's going to be able to put his machine back on the track. But under the caution light, we get an accident in turn number one. And they could only be doing a speed of around about 80 miles an hour under the yellow. So I can't imagine what could have happened. They must have touched each other. He must have run over something. Or someone wasn't looking where they were going. We have a little less than... Seven laps to go now as the field works around and Richard Petty is again in command. I don't know what could have happened there, Keith, when they spun off there under the yellow, but it's a surprising thing. When you are a racing driver, the slight diversion of interest can change things a great deal. I remember once in Monte Carlo, only last year, after I had won the race at Monte Carlo, I was in my cooling down lap and I started to take my gloves off, something that I don't normally do started to take them off. I wasn't looking where I was going. Emerson Fittipaldi came alongside to sort of congratulate me for winning the race, and we collided. It was my fault. I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have been distracted by taking my gloves off, but I did it, and I ran into Emerson. Of course, we nearly crashed. We nearly had a heavy incident. As it was, no one was hurt. No damage was done. But it looks as if we're going to get a green here, and in fact, the green is out, and off they go. man to watch is the man who is trailing the pack right there, Richard Petty. A.J. Foyt, a lap down, is in second place. Ramos Stott, a lap down, is in third place. Richard Brooks, a lap down, is fourth. And Cuckoo Marlin, a lap down, is five. And Donnie Allison would be in the number six position. Obviously, Richard Petty now is going to have to drive very, very conservatively. You're going to see a man of great experience not getting himself into a great deal of trouble, but they're four abreast going down the main street. Obviously, he's not taking that much care. As they come around to finish, start finish here and finish this lap, there will be five to go. So we're nearing the finish of the Daytona 500 for 1974. Richard Petty in the center of that pack there. You can see the car that we're following there. The blue and red car, the number 43 car, Richard Petty wants to keep right out of trouble. doesn't want to get into any sort of heavy situation. Let's move Cale Yarborough up in the standings. Petty running alone with uh, Donnie Allison. Uh, now they place him in second place, a lap down. A.J. Ford third, a lap down. Cale Yarborough up in there in fourth spot, a lap down, followed by Richard Brooks, Ramo Scott. And Richard Petty moves up alongside and goes by A.J. Foyt. So he puts 
put A.J. down by two, and he's coming up on Bobby Isaac there in that red car with the black hood, number 27. A.J. Foyt still driving a very good race because he hasn't been a completely healthy man. A.J. Foyt was off ill for quite a long time, and this is one of the first big races he's come back to. His strength has not been absolutely in the form, so A.J. was really conserving himself in some small way, but still this is a very grueling race, and he stood up to the pace very well. And Richard is running right up in there among them. He's working his way through some very heavy traffic, but so far he's experienced no discomfort and no trouble as he moves up alongside. That should be Cale Yarborough, I believe. Help it, Waltrip. And there's another man who, of course, hasn't been feeling too well because he had an accident here in one of the early races. Um, Dara Waltrip had a very heavy accident in contact with the car very severely in practice rim. And have we a car smoking on the outside right hand side, the yellow car under, does look as if it's smoking a little bit and in fact that would be Richard Brooks if it is smoking which would be a very sad situation for him at this stage in the race. It is indeed, it's a car smoking. Now is it a tyre or is it a mechanical situation? The smoke has disappeared for the moment. It's Richard Brooks. It does look like a tyre, it's Richard Brooks staying low, the number 32 car, he's in the dirt, and that's where the, the smoke is coming from right now, the dust is being thrown up. And there you see Richard Petty sitting in behind Cale Yarborough there, as Cale moves out to pass, going into turn three, goes low in turn three, Richard still stays up high in the banking, the 31 degree banking, and there's the tyre, you can see it, it's tire. Richard Brooks and Simon I, number 32 car, the front tyre, he's going to have difficulty holding that together, because the tires obviously come apart. Now this is a very delicate situation for a racing driver. He can't go too fast or he's going to lose it. He can't go too slowly or he's not going to get back properly. He's obviously concerned about time because he's in a competitive situation. Okay, the white flag will be out the next time around. Two laps to go. A little less than two laps to go now. As they come off turn number two. And Richard Petty... Well, unless he faints on the way to the clubhouse, he's going to win it. Unless his car just absolutely stops. And he will win the Daytona 500 for a fifth time. That's an incredible accomplishment because no one else is anywhere near that kind of a record on this massive super speedway. And Richard Petty is going to win it. And he's going to weigh, uh, go away from it having won the richest stock car race in history. Driving a very well balanced race throughout. The sign of a great racing driver. We said it right at the top of the show. We said it right at the beginning. And of course, you were seeing it in action. Richard Petty, who's had more experience of winning in this racetrack than anybody else. And there's the prize money. First prize, $31,050. Second prize, $13,750. And third place, $8,700. Big payoff, as you saw, flashed on your screen, and the race, of course, run under the sanction of NASCAR. And there's lots of action coming up for you down the road, including the Carolina 500, which will be run at Rockingham. And you'll have action at Richmond, Virginia. And the checkered flag is out. Here comes Richard Petty. The Daytona 500 for 1974. Sue Marlin is going to get second place as he fought his way out of the pack on a good draft. Ramos Stott of Keokuk, Iowa picks off third. Cale Yarborough will come in four. A.J. Ford five. And Donnie Allison, who had the lead, a big lead, lost it with a blown tire. Donnie Allison is going to finish in number six. <laughs> 